We are Team Docs, here to present an all performance during the preliminary round of Singapore's Coast Bees Rescue U19. Um, so here's a short introduction of the team. I'm Venus, and my main programming language is Python. This happens to be my first year participating in Coast Bees Rescue. I'm Ernest, and I mainly program in Python and C++, with some experience in Coast Bees Rescue last year. So we went for the category of Coast Base Rescue U19, where the goal of the challenge was to have the robot collect gems scattered around the map and deposit them while avoiding obstacles and traps. The main strategy to use in maximizing our chances of success are zoning and pathfinding. So let's start with zoning. Zoning is a process in which the map is split into zones for gems, giving the robot knowledge about roughly where the gems of each color will spawn. So well, naturally, each zone has its respective reward values for the gems within it, and there are also minimum and maximum X and Y values that correspond to the borders of the zone. So the robot will decide on the best zone it can go to by calculating the zone efficiency, well, as shown by the formula. It will then move to the zone with the highest efficiency to collect the gems. Our zoning was mainly used to obtain as many sets of um, RRCCBB as possible, so we could spawn super plus objects repeatedly. Next comes the part where the robot must know how to get to each zone, as well as other tasks where the robot needs to find an object. The method used here is the A star search algorithm, which finds the shortest path from any point to any other point. To start with pathfinding, the robot must know the map. This process is started by painting over the map with Microsoft Paint to simplify it, removing all the lighting and making the map much easier for the program to pass. Afterwards, we can put the simplified map into a Python program that outputs a 2D C or C++ array using the Python imaging library, taking RGB values of pixels from the simplified map. The array is then fed into a C++ program that is used to generate a map of weights, with higher numbers corresponding to more difficult terrain to traverse, so the pathfinding algorithm will avoid them. This weight map is pasted into the code for the A star algorithm to work, generating the shortest path. So here's a demonstration of the A star search in video form. Okay, so using the techniques that we showed off previously, we managed to get a high score of 2,460 points during the preliminary round, which was much higher than last time. Pathfinding was the key to our success, as it allowed the robot to seamlessly explore the map to look out for whatever it needed. Next up, we'll be showing you how to debug your variables in C code. We'll be putting the variables into the debug menu of the simulator, so you can watch the variables change in real time. Firstly, you will need to find the get debug info function, which is probably at the very bottom of your C code. It should look something similar to the picture that uh, we have put on the slides, but we've already modified ours. Then you will need to add the variable's name to the string, which is the orange part of the text. You can put it in any order, but you will need to remember the order and use it later. So we recommend putting it at the very start or the very end. You will need to use the format shown below as well, which is var name equals percentage d semicolon. Uh, format specifiers are more advanced and we'll be covering that later, but for now you can just leave it as percentage d. Finally, you can put the variable into the red part of the code, separated by the other variables with commas. Make sure that the order is correct so that if you put the a variable as first in the string, it should also be the first variable after the string. So the position in the orange area should be the same as the position in the red area. 
With this, the debugging code should work for most people. But if you are looking for more advanced debugging, you will need to know about format specifiers. Depending on the type of variable that you are going to use for debugging, you may need to change the format specifier, which is the letter after the percentage sign. As you can see, we have a list of common and useful format specifiers on the slides for your convenience. So you can just swap out percentage D for another format specifier according to what you need. So if you need a floating coin number or a decimal, you would use percentage F. In the real world, search and rescue robots are also able to make use of pathfinding. Although it is much harder as the environment is more likely to change with time, not easy to map out and is also much more hazardous. However, there's a possibility that with real-time map generation and sharing of the generated maps between multiple robots, pathfinding can still be very helpful. Thank you for your attention.